what is going on? Welcome back to another video. Today, back from the garage, thanks to the lockdown, we are going back over our program reviews. I hope you guys liked the starting strength in the last episode. Now we're moving on to a new program. And as you guys can see behind me, we're going to be going over the five, three, one program by Jim Wendler. Let's get to it. Now, that being said, we're gonna make sure to keep things as simple as possible because there are a bunch of caveats in Jim Wendler's 531 program that you can follow. We're gonna go as simple as we can to keep the overview and then get to some of the pros and cons of the program, which is probably gonna be more important for most of you. So let's start with the basic overview. What is the 531 program? This program consists of three to four training days per week on a four week cycle where we focus each day on one of the main lifts, the squat, the bench press, the deadlift, and the overhead press. Now, if you choose to do the three day a week program instead of the four day a week, there are some changes to the program um, when it comes to what days you do each lift. Possibly the key focus to this program is that you are going to progress slowly and steadily where you're going to be going for rep maxes instead of one rep maxes, hence the 531. We'll come back to those later in the video. And what's very, very important with this program is that it is totally fine for every level, um, maybe not for the super advanced, but for beginner and especially the intermediate, this program works really well for a very long time, like almost like forever. So now let's go over some of the information that they provide to you, say through T Nation or through Jim Wendler's website himself. I'll leave a link for that down below. And we'll put together in the order that makes sense in my mind so you guys can see how I put together someone's 531 program if that's what they're looking for. All right, so this is where most people make the biggest mistake in Jim Wendler's 531 program is where to start. So let me help you. First thing we need to know is numbers based off your one rep max currently, or at least sometime maybe within the last nine months at max. We don't want to be using your max from five years ago. Doesn't quite work. So we need to know what your recent one rep max is, and then you're going to take 90% of that one rep max and that is what all other percentages are pulled from. What this allows us to do is kind of cut out all the bullshit and really figure out where people's numbers are at, not what they think their one rep max is. We need to know generally where you're at. Now, if you don't actually have a recent one rep max, uh, don't worry about it. You can either take a couple of weeks and go find out what it is before you start the program so you have recent numbers, or if you know a recent three rep max, that's usually about 90% of your one rep max. So you just use your three rep max numbers in the 531 program. So once you've figured out your one rep max numbers, estimated the 90% of those one rep max numbers, or you found your three rep max and you're gonna use that as your baseline, your 90%. Now let's figure out what we're gonna do each week for the cycle. Let's go to the chart. All right, so let's put this all together. This is the broad strokes four week wave that this program rotates around. Now, before we get to the nitty gritty, it is very important to note that all percentages are based off of the 90% one rep max, not your true one rep max here. So you'll see we have the four weeks set up week one, two, three, and four, and each day you have three sets. So this covers the squat, bench, deadlift, and overhead press each on their own days. Week one, you'll do 65% for five reps, 75% for five reps, and then 85% for five plus. Week two, you'll do 70% for three, 80% for three, and then 90% for three plus. Week three here is the heaviest week, so the biggest week 
of your four week wave. Set one is 75% for five reps. Set two is 85% for three reps. And then the final set is 95% for one plus. When you see a five plus, three plus, or one plus, that means that you do max reps, whatever you can manage with that weight, with the goal of setting a rep record each workout. So whenever you see the third set here for week one, two, and three, all those plus signs, that means that is when you're going to go for at least that rep plus more if you're able to. And then week four is a deload or a de-stress, however you want to look at it, for 40, 50, and uh, 60 percent for five reps notice there is no plus sign on the third set that's meant so you can rest recover and get ready for the next four week wave now i probably will say when i'm reading this chart i'm going to go ahead and reiterate this because it is the most important part of this program when you see the five plus three plus or one plus on that chart in your weekly progressions those are your chances to hit rep maxes you're going to do five or more reps, three or more reps, one or more reps if you're able to handle it. Those more reps is where this program really hits its stride. Every rep you hit over five, three, or one is where muscles developed, where strength is developed, and a little bit of cojones is developed because it takes some cojones to push through some of these weights. To reference a story from Muhammad Ali, uh, when he was asked how many push-ups or might have been sit-ups he does in a day, he goes, I don't know, I don't count until it starts to hurt. He doesn't count before it starts to hurt, before it starts to hurt, before it starts to hurt. Those reps afterwards, when it sucks, those matter the most. Boy, that escalated quickly. That being said, there are days that you're going to come in beat up, tired, you know, maybe you've had to do all four days in a row, not recommended. But whatever the case may be, five reps that day is all you might be able to muster, or three or one. On those days, hit your minimum rep goal, and then get out of there. Just don't do that every day, you pansies. For accessory work, it's actually going to be kept to a minimum. The focus is on the core lift, squat, bench, deadlift, overhead press. Now, there's a number of ways in which you can do these accessory work. Um, we will go over some of them, but we're going to really focus on just one. Keep this simple. The trivimerate, the trivimerate, trigonometry. The ex other accessory work that you can do, I'll name them, but we won't go into them because they kind of self explain themselves. We have the bodyweight accessory, we have the boring but big, and the I'm not doing jack shit accessory protocols. Now that we know how we generally put together a full workout, let's talk about the cycle a little bit. Every four weeks after you go through your four week cycle, you will add either five pounds to your bench press or overhead press estimated one rep max, and then 10 pounds to your squat and deadlift 90% one rep max and begin the wave again. So let's put together a four week wave and then show you how to increase the estimated one rep maxes and so that way we know how to do the next four week wave. All right, so let's put this all together. Now we're gonna put together the main core lifts with the accessory work and with the four week wave that we discussed before and then we'll go over the one rep maxes, the numbers in which we draw from. So let's start up here in workout one, standing shoulder press, we have our four week wave, our sets and reps that we went over before, and the percentages. Those will stay the same for workout two, three, and four. Now, with the accessory work that we chose, we're going to do two extra exercises that accommodate the main movement, do not distract. So we have dips and chin ups for the sets and reps here. Now, there's no percentage of one rep max, those are not admissible. And then we do the same thing for workout two. We have weeks one through four sets and reps percentages then we have the good mornings and hanging leg raises for their sets and reps now i want to make this very clear these are not set in stone accessory work these are examples that we actually pulled directly from t nation and exercises that i would probably actually do in this program and we do the same thing for workout three and workout four if you want, you can go ahead and take a quick little screenshot of this so that way you can come back to this and have the numbers right in front of you. Now, it's important 
that when we're doing this, we have the numbers pretty quick and accessible to us for the squat, bench, deadlift, and overhead press. So here we have our one rep maxes. These are our true one rep maxes. And we're going to first take our 90% of those. So 90% of 315 is 283.5. 90% of 225 is 202.5. 405 is 364.5. 135 is 121.5. Those will be the numbers in which you draw the percentages off of for your first four-week wave. Once you've completed that first four-week wave, you're going to add 10 pounds to your squat, one rep max right down here. You're going to add five to your bench, 10 to your deadlift, five to your overhead press. Then these new sets of numbers that have increased will be the numbers in which you draw the percentages off of for your next four-week wave. And you will continue this for as long as you possibly can, and hopefully you won't get stuck, but these are pretty slow and steady progressions that you can take that should keep you moving and getting stronger for a very long time. The pros and cons. Pro, it can be done potentially forever. <laughs> Pro, this has been a proven strength training protocol for a very long time and has been used by some very prominent lifters, me included, for a long duration of time. Pro, it is applicable to 99% of the people out there, including you. Pro, the workouts last usually about one hour, maybe an hour and a half. If you're a power lifter and have been at an intermediate level, you know that's a pretty short workout. Pro, it is extremely specific for power lifters and even generally strong men. It can be adapted to. Uh, it hits the four main lifts. The four main lifts are the main focus. And so for powerlifting, you're going to do at least three of those lifts. So guess what? It's pretty darn specific and you're hitting a pretty heavy weight and you're getting pretty damn strong. That was a lot of pretties. Now this one's pretty important. It is another pro. This program takes into consideration recovery. It is recommended in this program that you don't do a workout every single day. You have one day in between every set of workouts. Also, since the lack of accessory work is done so that way you're not beating up your body too much and you have time to recover between each one of your workouts. Cons, and there's not many of them. Con, you don't get a lot of practice doing just a heavy single. Remember, this as a skill set that you need in powerlifting is to hit heavy singles. It's like asking the quarterback not to throw a football before he goes on to the field. It doesn't quite always relate. And since your plan is to always do a rep max past one, you're always working on a sub 90% level, no matter how you do this, it'll always be below 90% of your one rep max. Con, it's boring. Duh, you're doing three exercises, and it's usually the same three exercises, you come back to it. You might switch up your accessories every once in a while, but there's not much change here. Squat, bench, deadlift, overhead press, done. Con. Con. And this is probably the biggest con, is that if you don't have a one rep max or a three rep max to work with, you have to go and take some time to find those numbers. Um, now, you might even be at an intermediate level lifter and not know your numbers just because you've never had uh, spotters around to really find your true one rep max to do this off of. That being said, just go make some friends, ask them to spot you at the gym once they open up, and go find out what your one rep max is or your three rep max. It's not that hard. And now it's time for my rating. What do I think of the 531 program? I give it a 4.5 stars out of 5. This is as pretty much as good as it gets when it comes to strength training and programming. It's easy to do. Anybody is welcome to do this program. There's not a high entry level to it. It goes on for forever. I just don't think there's any one perfect program out there, so I'm probably not ever going to give any program a 5 out of 5, but this is as damn close as it gets. And not to mention that there are so many other programs that kind of have 531 as their backbone. Even if you look at like the juggernaut method, if you look at the fifth set, 
if you look at other programs that maybe a different trainer will put together, they are kind of all based maybe loosely off the 5-3-1 program. Um, we'll go over those a little bit more when we get to those programs alone, but you know that if they copy the program or use it as a backbone, it must be pretty dang good. Imitation is the greatest form of flattery, Dylan. God. All right, guys. Thank you for showing up for that video. I hope you learned a whole bunch. I hope you enjoyed the way I present the information. If you do, please help me with the algorithm. Give a thumbs up to this video. Leave a comment down below. Those are some of the biggest ways you can help my channel grow so that other people can join the field army. That is huge for me. Also, subscribe down below. Hit the little bell icon if you aren't already so that way you get notified whenever we go over another program or do our training tips or whatever it is our videos may be. You get alerted every single time if you hit that bell icon. Otherwise, guys, go out. Have a great week. I'll see you on the other side. Peace.